Hello. Edutainment Studios and Access Healthcare welcome you to Hepatitis C, Preventing Complications. This module is part one of a four-part series on preventing complications of hepatitis C. Your liver is the largest organ inside your body. It helps your body digest food, store energy, and remove poisons. Hepatitis is an inflammation of the liver. One type, hepatitis C, is caused by the hepatitis C virus, HCV. It usually spreads through contact with infected blood. Most people who are infected with hepatitis C do not have any symptoms for years. If you do get symptoms, you may feel as if you have the flu. You may also have jaundice, dark-colored urine, and pale bowel movements. A blood test can tell if you have it. There is no vaccine for HCV. In this course, the objective is to help you learn the basic information about hepatitis C. The hepatitis C virus infects your liver, an organ that has many important jobs. These jobs include breaking down things like medicine and alcohol and removing harmful chemicals and waste from your blood, storing nutrients and releasing them as your body needs them, and making important chemicals for blood clotting and healing and bile, a liquid that digests fat. Hepatitis C harms your liver, causing inflammation or swelling that can lead to fibrosis, cirrhosis, or liver failure. These kinds of damage prevent your liver from working as well as it should. Liver cirrhosis is a chronic disease of the liver marked by degeneration of cells, inflammation, and fibrous thickening of tissue. It is typically a result of alcoholism or hepatitis. In stage 1 of liver disease, your liver becomes tender and enlarged because it is trying to fight off infection or heal itself, so inflammation occurs. In stage 2 of liver disease, your liver will begin to scar. Fibrosis happens when scar tissue replaces healthy tissue. This is a problem because scar tissue blocks blood flow and stops your liver from working like it should. In stage 3 of liver disease, your liver is so damaged that it cannot heal itself and the damage cannot be reversed through treatment. Cirrhosis can cause many complications like fluid buildup in your legs or abdomen, type 2 diabetes, or problems with memory, concentration, or sleeping. In stage 4 of liver disease, you can have liver cancer and or liver failure. Cirrhosis is a main cause of liver cancer, but it can happen at any stage of liver damage. If you have liver cancer, new cells form when your body does not need them, or damaged cells do not die when they should. The extra cells build up and form a mass called a tumor. Symptoms include bloating, pain in the top right area of your abdomen or near your right shoulder, nausea, weight loss or loss of appetite, and jaundice. Liver failure is a life-threatening condition that requires emergency care. Early symptoms of liver failure include nausea, loss of appetite, feeling very tired, and diarrhea. More serious symptoms include confusion, disorientation, and extreme fatigue. Hepatitis C can be acute or chronic, but for most people, an acute infection leads to a chronic infection. Acute hepatitis C is short-term. It occurs within six months after you're first exposed to the virus. If you have acute hepatitis C, your body may be able to get rid of the virus on its own, so you will not have long-term complications. If you have hepatitis C longer than six months, this usually means it is chronic or long-term. You are not able to get rid of the virus, so it stays in your body. This is what happens for most people who have hepatitis C, and these people do not have any real noticeable symptoms early on. If patients do have symptoms, they usually show up two weeks to six months after you're exposed to the virus. They tend to be mild and flu-like. These can include feeling tired, muscle and joint pain, itchy skin, yellowing of your skin and whites of your eyes, dark yellow urine, loss of appetite, nausea or vomiting, and light-colored bowel movements. Please feel free to investigate these other sites for more information, and remember to bring any concerns or questions in to discuss with your doctor. Thank you for joining us today for part one of this four-part series on hepatitis C, and come back for part two.